What's up, guys? How you doing? I'm Paul. I'm Morgan. Mm -hmm. Today's video, we are responding, we're reacting, or wow, Squishy is <laughs> trying to talk in the microphone. We are going to be ultimately rebuttaling. Is that the right word? Sure. We're rebutting uh, this Emmanuel Acho. He calls it uncomfortable conversations with mm -hmm. Emmanuel Acho. And this particular uh, conversation he had was, it's it's very relevant. It is. Uh, got posted a little over a week ago. Topic: the overturn of Roe v. Wade. Actually, pull it up, Morgan. See what what he titled it. Should be a picture of it there. Pro life versus pro choice overturning Roe v. Wade. Uncomfortable conversations, and it's interesting. There's this, no pro life for there. Well, we're gonna get. To, well, we're gonna get to that because one on the panel you you might have seen is the one and only only. Chelsea Smith, wife of Judah Smith. We're going to get to all that. We are going to push back on it. Mm -hmm. And you will see what we're going to say. Yep. But if you're new here, make sure you subscribe to our channel. We're giving commentary on culture, social issues, and faith to help you be in the world. But of the word, man, what a good video for that. <laughs> yep. In the world, for such a time as this, 2022, things are crazy. What a better time than to be of the word of God. Mm -hmm. Shout out to our patrons. Thank you guys for supporting us monthly. We will be going live with our beloved patrons tomorrow. Well, not live. I mean live, but it's a Zoom call. It's a Zoom call where we get to see them face to face and go deeper with them. If you guys would like to be part of that and you're not a patron, patreon.com slash Paul and Morgan show. We will link it below. We're excited to see you guys there. Give this video a thumbs up. Help out the algorithms. So let's go, Morgan. Without further ado, you guys, ultimately, we... We have pulled out, I want to say this whole video, Emmanuel Acho on his channel, I think it, the timestamp was there. It's around 30 minutes long. Oh, yeah. We pulled out a number of what we consider, there it is, relevant clips from the video. We had to kind of speed up some of them to keep them short enough to try to, you know, not get... Yeah, I think only one of them you can really tell because, like, the voice changes, but the rest, like... Aren't that bad. We try to keep the, the clips on the shorter end for monetization and not getting copyright and stuff like that. So, yeah, Morgan, I think we just, I mean, dive right into the first clip. Let's go. Yeah. Dun, dun, and then dun. we will use it to just kick things off. We, we got a lot. We got a lot to say. There is a lot to say about this video. Yep. Let's go. Well, there was so much going on at that point in time where I felt like I was already letting them down in so many different ways. Um, and then I found out that I was pregnant. And I just remember thinking, my parents did not do all of this to bring me here for me to now bring a child and for them to be in poverty, for them to suffer, and for me to suffer along with them. And so I very quickly decided that abortion was the way for me to go. How all right, so yeah, we jump right in. That's going to be like the fastest that you'll hear. Yeah. Some of them are, <laughs> are more regular speed than that. But yeah, so ultimately you have this panel. And one of the reasons that I actually titled, titled it the way I did, one of the reasons we are rebuttaling this is because, to my knowledge, every person on this panel claims to be a Christian. Uh, Emmanuel Acho, pull up his Twitter. You can see um, two things. What does he say in the bio there, Morgan? If I followed one, it'd be Jesus. Kind of an interesting way to put it, but okay. Yeah. Jesus follower. And then you can see he's actually, his pinned tweet currently is... Uh, a clip of this, mm -hmm. Roe v. Wade, and what did he read? What I was curious to see what he said about that, Morgan. Daughters, share with your moms. Brothers, share with your sisters. Ladies, share with your friends. And spouses, sit with your wives. It's time to heal together. Let's get uncomfortable. Okay, so he's obviously, <laughs> he's pushing this conversation. I, I would say he's, he's pleased with it, how it turned out. He's, I've seen it publicized. Morgan, before we get into too many of these clips and even that first clip, just what what is like a, a what do you want to say? Well, it's interesting because three of the four women have had abortions, although one of those women actually had an ectopic pregnancy. So I'm not even gonna call her procedure an abortion because that's not what it was. Um, then there's Chelsea Smith, who is Judah Smith, very large mega church famous pastor um go and pull up the, the picture of them so yeah. you guys can see and she i guess is called a pastor for some reason i'm not totally sure like if she went to 
seminary or let's let's sit on on her for a minute so again I, what i was saying was one of the main reasons we wanted to hit on this make make a rebuttal to this video to our knowledge everyone on the panel um i'm sorry what i'm looking for says that they're a christian i think mm -hmm. almost all of them during this actual video at some point said yes as a follower of jesus as a christian so okay it's on now it's on the conversations open we see the apostle paul say how much are we supposed to judge those inside the church meaning make right judgments to those inside the church like that is the bread and butter here obviously to call out in love admonish we're not condemning but we're hopefully hopefully looking at scripture and god bring conviction but these are church people here mm -hmm. and then you got chelsea i was about to say chelsea clinton chelsea smith <laughs> who I've actually met before. I, I attended a Bible study for a brief time when I lived in LA. I don't know if I've told you that. Mm -hmm. um, she was really nice meeting her. I've met uh, her husband, Pastor Judah Smith. But in this video, as we show these clips, I, I'm grieved. I guess grieved would probably be a good word. It's really, it was very hard to watch this video, honestly. It was uncomfortable for, in my opinion, all of the wrong reasons. Uncomfortable because all of these women had their reasons, had their, in my opinion, excuses as to why they got an abortion. Um, and then you had Chelsea Smith, who is calling herself a pastor and who is the wife of a very well-known pastor. He, he considered uh, Justin Bieber's close friend and kind of mentor. Yes, not for a second pushing back or saying, hey, let's call this what this is. It was the murder of a child. Um, it, it was very weird. It was very weird. And I do want to give a little caveat the video the, the, this video was edited by i guess um his team uh emmanuel acho's team so there could have been further conversation but i think we can all get a pretty good idea right i'm pretty sure we got the meat of <laughs> of the feel so anyway morgan going back to the very first clip you got one of the women there on the panel she had just said i uh, my parents were immigrants. They came to America. We're, the, the conversation is getting going here. Emmanuel's facilitating this conversation. We go to the first lady. She's saying, my parents were immigrants. They left good jobs, came to America for to support myself, and I drop out of college. And then I find out I'm pregnant. And I do not want to put them in a, a tougher spot. Either they've done all this for me. I'm ultimately got an abortion. Yeah. So there was the first one. Play, yeah. Unless you have any more thoughts on that, play the next clip. I don't know what my life would have been like had I given up this dream that I had my whole life. Yeah. I don't. I don't know if I would have been all of who I am today. Would I still have shown up in the world the way I do now? So then would you say or submit in the figurative sense your yeah. abortion also saved your life? Yeah. All right. It's about, it's getting juicy now. Pan over to other lady, an Olympic athlete. Mm -hmm. This is sad because I feel like her out of all the panel she is one who, in my opinion, from watching her and hearing her, it seems like she's still trying to come up with some type of justification okay. as to why she did it because she still doesn't feel good about it. She's but still kind of conflicted. Right. She's conflicted. Like, she's trying to act like, no, this was the best thing for me. But, like, it seems like deep down she knows, like, this was not a good thing. Her reason... As to why she ended her child's life, to me, is, and I just am going to say it how it is, it is like the most narcissistic, selfish reason in the universe to me. She was an Olympic athlete. She was very newly pregnant and was literally the next day about to go run a race and hopefully win the gold medal. 
um, and she just could not do it pregnant. I don't know why. Like, she could have easily run the Olympics and run that race very early in pregnancy. And that like, baby would have probably, at least to some extent, thrown off her dreams. And she talks about it. Right. It puts an incredible emphasis in these in this little her talking about her dream since childhood, Olympic athlete, and then she finds out she's pregnant. She had to run this race. This was her life stream. She worked so hard for it. She could not let a child get in the way of it. Yet she was with the man of her dreams that she knew she was going to be marrying anytime soon. Um, she knew that she wanted to have kids one day, but just not now. It was very much not an inconvenience. The timing. the timing was not right. And I... I <sighs> very it's intriguing the way that this video starts it goes from one lady timing was bad just dropped out of college i can't do a baby right now to the other lady the athlete not a good time you see right there in the first two ladies 90 percentage of 90 percent of abortions in america probably yeah it's a very large percentage of inconvenience is why they decided to end the life of a child and i know that's gonna really make people some people that watch this mad mm -hmm. don't how dare you blanket statement that mm -hmm. but that does what we just saw represents the majority of abortions it just does something along those lines in that field mm -hmm. um and then you heard emmanuel acho this christian that says if i'm gonna follow anyone it'd, it'd be jesus and he says, so ultimately, would you say that this kind of saved your life? That the access to abortion saved your life? Because, as you said, you don't know where, where you'd be. The mark that you would have had on the world, you don't know if that would have been the same had you brought a baby into the world. Mm -hmm. So would you say this? Sa I, I Honestly, I'm getting just fired up in an angry <laughs> way thinking about shame on you, Emmanuel Acho, following Jesus saying so you'd kind of say that getting an abortion saved your life mm -hmm. what that is so like you said incredibly perverted and selfish mm -hmm. ending a baby's life to not save your life but to save your childhood dream of running in the olympics it's so and you still could have run in the olympics right you still could have run this this is where my confusion with calling yourself a Christian and saying that, that that's why you got an abortion. Really, there's no excuse to get an abortion, but that's your reason is because of your selfish dreams. I'm sorry, but they're selfish when you're to the point of you're going to end another life because you want to pursue your dreams. It's not biblical. It's not Christ-like. The dreams in themselves are not selfish. Right, but when no. it comes to what you're having to do right. to hang on to, to get that to dream, those dreams, selfish. Yes, incredible. I mean, selfish to the <laughs> selfish to the oh. the nth degree. But again, you have people's. I got somebody like probably hanging a picture <laughs> or something. Um, you have people that see it differently. So let's keep unpacking that because mm -hmm. we do have a pastor, not just for Christians in this video. We have a pastor that can really guide as we're supposed to and it's a whole nother topic of females being pastors chelsea smith was addressed as pastor smith at the beginning of this video we're not going to go into that mm -hmm. we'll just call her pastor smith she has an opportunity to guide the flock in this video yeah let's go ahead and play the next clip are poor yeah. communities who are poor that don't have the privilege of finding an abortion clinic, of affording an abortion, or even just the access to the education of what their bodies do, of how their bodies work. Mm -hmm. There are so many women who, I've literally heard this firsthand, who have gotten pregnant, had no idea how. Yeah. See Chelsea nodding over there is, is this woman, this Christian woman she calls herself, says, "There's we need better access to education. There's so many women that I've known firsthand I have no idea how they got pregnant. I'm sorry. I just kind of have to laugh at that because if if the woman was a child, that would be one thing. If the woman is 24 years old and has no idea how she got pregnant, 
I'm not buying it. I'm sorry. I'm just not buying it. <laughs> I just that's I can't. Oh man. <laughs> No, I, I'm, I'm not trying to like get in some intense zone where I'm just ripping to shreds everything I hear. But that is the goofiest thing I've ever heard. Oh, come on. Seriously. She, she's using that as to justify. So, I'm man. You don't know how you got pregnant. Well. You had sex. <laughs> you had sex with a man who probably wasn't your husband. And you got pregnant. Mm-hmm. Yep. <sighs> All right, next it's clip. The next clip. <laughs> Not much to say to that one. Bible, because she was caught in the very act. So where was the man in the story? You know, very similar to a woman facing an unwanted pregnancy. Mm-hmm. She just could be left alone. Yeah. The same way this woman was left alone. And in this moment, Jesus didn't say anything. It's one of the beautiful silent moments mm-hmm. of Jesus. Mm-hmm. And he just got down and wrote in the dirt. And then he's just said this incredible statement. He said, let him who is without sin yes, throw the first, the first stone. stone. Mm-hmm. And So this is the first kind of real weigh-in from Chelsea Smith. And I want to say this before I... Man, before I really push back on Chelsea Smith, I want to say this. Morgan, I, I know firsthand how when you are engaging in a conversation with maybe people that think differently than you, mm-hmm. it can be that challenging of, I don't want to say something that just is so bold and so anti or against what they're saying right. that they're going to like just immediately sh- write me off. Mm-hmm. And yeah. again, going back to we had a collab with Jacqueline Glenn and we're really thankful for them and we consider them friends. But in that video, it's like, okay, I'd rather not say, I, I'm just tr- really trying to choose my words here. Yeah. But again, you do not compromise the truth. And, and now I'm kind of wondering what does Chelsea think the truth is? Yeah, I don't know. Someone said that there was one pro-life around the panel, and if that's her, that did not come across in any way, shape, or form, in my opinion. Uh, she never once made it clear of, I am against abortion. She never once made it clear of, I believe abortion is killing your a child. Uh, I stand for the sanctity of life. Like, she never, ever made any of that clear unless there was something off that they decided to edit out but if right. that was the case right. and chelsea was watching it back she should be coming out with a statement saying hey church church home in seattle mm-hmm. i just want you to know they cut out where i really stood for pro-life for yeah. the baby yeah but everything she said was very much catering to the women that she was sitting with catering is a good word yeah and it was like okay there is a way to lovingly confront something. And again, like Paul said, I can only imagine how hard it would be to sit there and be like, look, ladies, <laughs> what you all did was sinful. It was murder. But there is an incredible God who is filled with forgiveness and mercy. And he loves you and he wants you to repent. And he will wash you clean of that. He will wash you clean of the guilt, of the shame. You can have be a new creation, be a new life in Jesus. But she didn't say any of that. She just kind of patted them on the back and was like, I can't even imagine how hard that was for you. Oh, I, mean, and I get it. If I'm someone that just doesn't know who the panel is, clicks on and watches it, I'm thinking everyone up there is pro-abortion. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, there's a pastor up there? Oh, yeah. okay. Well, cool. Right on. Pastors are pro. They're, they're pro-choice right. now. Yeah. And uh, on that note, again, again, kind of what we've already alluded to, the title of this is Pro-Life Verse pro life versus pro cho- choice, overturning Roe v. Wade and comfortable conversations. One, there was nothing uncomfortable for the pro choice side to watch this video no. or to engage in this video. No. Pro life, you're really going to title this pro life versus pro choice? There was no, no back and forth, pushback, any type of dialect. There was no Christian on the panel that is advocating for. I had my baby and praise God that I did. Mm -hmm. I went ahead and had my baby, even though the situation that it was in wasn't maybe ideal Mm -hmm. or I put it up for adoption even or any of that. No. And Chelsea Smith maybe could have been that and wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. It was not an uncomfortable conversation. And there she, (laughs) she brings up, you know, Jesus, the, the special story of Jesus with the woman caught in adultery. That is a beautiful story. Mm hmm. And I'm, I'm not going to take away from that. And that I'm sure 
was an incredibly powerful moment and a very challenging moment um, to look back. I would like to do more commentary on that. I'll leave you Stucky. I like literally had to pause it right as I was about, she was about to go into this, but she was talking in her video because she did kind of a rebuttal to this video as well. And she was sharing that commentary and context of this story is so key sure. and how a lot of people take this story and run with it being like see jesus would never like do this or that but like they also forget and don't mention what jesus told that woman to do yeah i like how chelsea <laughs> made it sound like so the end of this story was what did jesus say let him who is without sin no what was the actual end of that story Morgan, go on. He said, turn from your sin. Go and sin no more. That was the conclusion yep. of his conversation with this lady. Mm -hmm. Chelsea, why didn't you mention that? Yeah. You had the opportunity. <laughs> was that edited from this video? Mm -hmm. Give us both sides of the coin. Yeah. Grace for this woman caught in adultery. And then now go and leave your life of sin. Repentance is key. Mm -hmm. Chelsea... I think this video is a perfect example of what we're seeing over and over in the church and over and over in Christians, um, progressive Christians, whatever you want to call them, of grace, only grace being shown. There's no balance. There's no grace and repentance. There's no grace and challenge. There's no grace and a judgment, a righteous judgment, which you are called to make to people in the church, to people calling themselves believers. We take that verse way out of context of don't judge or you, lest you be judged. And so this video and Chelsea and her, how she responded to everything and everything she said was very much like, Grace, I'm a, grace, grace, grace. I'm an advocate. I'm empathetic. I'm I'm, so for you she, women. It, it, she's about to say some more stuff we'll get to. I, I want to say that we will. I actually already did. I linked the full Emmanuel Acho's uncomfortable conversation video below. So if you guys want to go watch all of that, I might encourage you to. Yeah. And then go check out Ali Bistecki's because hers is good as well. It's like people think it's pro-life, pro-abortion. That's almost what it feels like to me sometimes. Yeah. Like if you're not pro-life, you're pro-abortion. I'm like, no. Like to me, pro-choice uh, introduces and infuses the nuances yeah. and compassion. Yeah. Right? It, it, it allows for compassion because situations vary based on experiences. Uh, I feel it's... Situations vary, experiences, nuance, 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 nuance. <laughs> Yeah, we talked about this with Lila Rose in our last video, just the idea of is pro-choice the most loving, most empathetic uh, place you can stand? Or can you be personally pro-life but vote pro-choice because you would never tell someone that they can't get an abortion? And just her response was very good. And it is, to me, it's just like, common sense but it's obviously not common sense to the world and this is why we're so divided of just like pro-life is the most loving and empathetic choice and there I know this idea being pushed and this lie being pushed that's been pushed for years and years of like pro-lifers are only pro-babies they don't care once they're born they just want to save their lives and then move on and that's just absolutely not true and the thousands upon thousands of pregnancy crisis resource centers across america are almost all run by christians and pouring into women pouring into babies pouring into families the majority into men. the majority are what are run by i mean would you say almost all for real well majority yeah okay. um i don't know maybe almost all i don't know but it is very common to see that and so i don't know it's it her whole thing about the nuances and stuff it's not nuance it's murder that's what we're talking about here. And no one talked about that in the video. No one explained what was what done what to their child was. when they had the procedure. No one explained or talked about the awful, horrendous things that are done to a baby in the womb when you have an abortion. And that to me is just like disgusting. Like we're sitting here talking about what we did and why not talk about what you did? No, they didn't. So...
Good stuff, baby. <laughs> Guys, again, help this video out. Give it a thumbs up. If you feel like what is being shared in this video needs to be heard, give it a thumbs up. Just like people are gushing over Emmanuel's video in his comment section and Emmanuel saying, make sure you share this with the mothers and brothers. Share it with your sisters. Share this. Get this <laughs> rebuttal out to the public. Mm -hmm. um, I will say, though, that I think when I looked, Emmanuel's top two comments were people saying, hey, Emmanuel, like, I'm pro-choice, but this was not a fair two-sided yeah. conversation. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was super interesting. <laughs> Those were like the top comments, and then came all the gushing comments about how amazing and awesome this combo was. Yeah. All right, next clip. I feel it's about power and control wow. more so than anything yeah. else. And so that is the part that I just can't sit with yeah. and be silent about um, because you multiple things can be true. You can hold space for a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. You can love God. You can be a member of your church. You can choose to have an abortion and you can still be a good person mm -hmm. all at the same time mm -hmm. and a multitude of other things all yeah. at once. That was juicy. You can love God, be a member of your church, and choose to have an abortion and still be a good person. Let's just sit on that for a minute. <laughs> I like, I just don't know really how to respond to that or what to think of it. Like, I think actually Morgan Kamala, 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 Kamala. recently came out and she was giving a speech and she, she Dr. Kamala said, I'm sorry. All right. I need to be nice. <laughs> I was I like, wait, nice. she's a doctor? <laughs> she, she pretty much said, I just want you to know that people listening, you guys can have an abortion and that does not need to go against your religious beliefs. There is this idea being pushed, obviously, and not being Good. pushed back on by the Christian pastors like Chelsea, it would appear. There's this idea of you can be a christian you can love god you can desire to walk to be a you can be a christ follower and oh yeah you can have an abortion too and that does not need to mess with your christian faith you can have an abortion and then you can repent and ask the lord for forgiveness and you will receive it but if you are a Christian and you know abortion is wrong, you know biblically God stands for life, and you go have an abortion, like, no, that does that's not how that it, no, just no, <laughs> like, and then you continue on living your life saying I'm a Christian and you don't repent for it, you don't have any guilt for it. I would question if you're walking with the Lord at all, if you know what his word says at all, if you know what he thinks about you, what he thinks about that child that he had placed in you, what he thinks about life in general, I would question if you know who God is at all. Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey my commands. She says, oh, you can love Jesus. You can love God and get an abortion. Mm -hmm. God says, thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not murder. Multiple passages alluding to that, protecting the innocent. Um, yeah, talking about in while you were, before you were even in your mother's womb, I knew you. Uh, I don't know. It's, yeah, just go and play the next clip. Do you feel as though more women's lives will be jeopardized by the Supreme Court rule. 100%. Emmanuel, it's already happening. So I see that a lot of women are delaying these life-saving surgeries yeah. just out of fear and out of all this back and forth. If I, if it took me two weeks to make that kind of decision last year, imagine what people are going through now. So this was the woman who had an ectopic pregnancy and had to have the procedure to remove uh, the fetus from her fallopian tubes. Medically, billing, coding-wise, it will be called a medical abortion. The procedure that is done to what's happening <laughs> to a woman who has an ectopic pregnancy. The difference between the Olympic woman who went and had an abortion and this woman who had an ectopic pregnancy is that the olympic went in with a life a vital life that could have 
fully grown in her womb, through in her uterus, and been delivered and lived. But instead, they ended that life and stopped it from happening. That cannot happen with an ectopic pregnancy. It's incredibly rare. If I don't even know if it's ever happened where a baby has survived in the fallopian tubes. So it is not ending a life. Half most of the time, a lot of the time, the, the fetus is already passed. And they're just removing that, just like a miscarriage. It's a DNC. They're removing the fetus. It is not an abortion. An abortion ends a life that could have been sustained. And so you have, yeah, that lady making her case that these laws now, these laws that we're seeing sweeping the nation, the overturning Roe v. Wade, as you just heard, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it's already happening. Many, Many women, because of these laws, are going to die. The propaganda that is being pushed, the misinformation that is being pushed is what is going to cause women to possibly die and what is going to cause women to not get the care that they need because of the crap that social media and that TV news outlets are pushing that is not true. So if it's scaring the doctor, one, shame on the doctor for not actually knowing the law and just like knowing what they can and can't do. Because this lady did say, she was like, so I was going in to get a checkup and my my nurse, my nurses were, they were nervous because of the Texas laws to treat me. And so, she said her doctor literally was like, I don't know if I can do this. So then they said, you come back tonight after hours and we will take care of this. Yeah. And I, I don't even know what to say to that. I mean, that doctor should be <laughs> prosecuted in my opinion for doing that in that way. That is, was not necessary at all. Well, there is no law. We got to be careful with that. But it's like, what is going on? Why would that doctor, what, like, why would the doctor say to an ectopic pregnancy patient? Again, because they don't know the law so and they're just is, believing. Is that probably what it was? I am pretty positive that's what's happening here is there are doctors out there who are believing the misinformation, not actually doing their own research. I have no idea what's going on in their minds, but there is no law that says an ectopic pregnancy or miscarriage cannot be taken care of well and we're no we're no law experts guys but lila rose did articulate it well in our previous video and we'll get that one linked below and, and there's, be stuck I would be, there's been lots of conversation of like just very mm-hmm. um well articulated on this idea of ectopic pregnancies yeah. so yeah all right so we're about to get to um <laughs> we're about to have chelsea smith bring this thing home with uh some interesting stuff so uh, we kind of it's like one bigger clip that we chopped down to three parts okay part one i have so much empathy and understanding for followers of jesus who would say i believe that life begins at conception Mm -hmm. and i believe that stopping an abortion is saving a life Mm -hmm. that's a very saving a life is a very valid cause Mm -hmm. but that's not the only life that we're called to save if you're pro-life wow there's a lot of life so let's so she's starting off she gives she gives a nice long pause she says i have empathy are you one of those chelsea that believes that life begins in the womb conception yeah we don't really know she didn't say she was but she has empathy at least okay better than nothing (laughs) then comes the long pause then the music starts (laughs) and then she says but aren't we supposed to be pro-life for all there's a lot of life to be pro-life for okay so the lot of life we just had two people on your panel say they had abortions because it wasn't the right time mm-hmm. that's the life as well that you're talking about yeah very strange and also i think there's that argument that she maybe was like slightly addressing of you guys don't care about the moms. You people who are out there celebrating the overturn of Roe vs. Wade, like, shame on you. You're not thinking about the mothers. You're not thinking about the women who are now scared. And that's just not true. That's not the reality. It's like, no, we do care. And we've been pouring into these people. We've been supporting pregnancy crisis centers. And now we're like, oh, my goodness, the babies get to live. And... Yeah, so this strange, weird statement that sounds so... Ambiguous, and I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, Chelsea. I'm not. I'm not trying to say, Chelsea meant this. 
but it was just such a weak sauce statement. Mm -hmm. You just had two people on your panel say pretty much, yeah, I, I got rid of my baby. So glad that I had, I had, okay, not trying to put words in their mouth. Got rid of my baby because it was not the right time. And then Chelsea makes that statement. Go ahead and play the next part. It's also taking one verse and making that as, making that one verse, Psalm 139, making that as black and white mm. as the verses of the forgiveness and love of Jesus Christ. It's one verse versus thousands and thousands of verses that are in the Bible. And so she's trying to say that there's literally only one verse in the entire Bible, Psalm 139, that talks about before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. Uh, that's just like not accurate at all. <laughs> well, because Emmanuel Acho brings that up and says, so, you know, what is the... What would you say, Chelsea, to the people who say, well, I stand, I'm the pro-life person because this verse that says you knit me together, you knew me before I was born, you knit me together in my mother's womb. Mm -hmm. She proceeds to say that. Yeah, I mean, what about the Ten Commandments? Thou shalt not murder. <laughs> Do I need to go back to, and we've made the, the Maverick City video actually and Mm -hmm. Talking about their drummer's post and talking about them. We I brought out a, a number of verses. Yeah. And there's that's not even to my knowledge, there's that <sighs> verse where in the Psalms it talks about it. One of the prophets talks about before I was in my womb, you predestined my path. Um, there's verses on protecting the innocent, not shedding the innocent the blood of the innocent. Mm -hmm. Um, thou shalt not murder. And yet she decides to say oh well there is this one verse but why would you fixate on that one verse when there's thousands of verses of jesus's love and forgiveness and she goes on to say play play the next and, and it's like so you're you're putting those verses at war with each other right it's so these scary. those verses aren't by in the same bible it's not going yeah. the same type of thing they all go together. Before that you knew me before I was in my mother's womb, you knit me together in my mother's womb and the love of Jesus aren't the same. Does he not love the little children mm -hmm. in the mother's wombs? Yeah. And she does say love and forgiveness. I wish she would expound on what she means there. Play that last clip. Yeah. In the Bible. And we have a conviction as when we look at the Bible is we put the emphasis where God puts the emphasis. Mm. And he puts the em emphasis on love. Mm. He puts the emphasis on forgiveness. He puts the emphasis on compassion. Yeah. And so as a follower of Jesus, wouldn't I put the emphasis there? Oh, makes me want to puke. I was about to say <laughs> <I'm> that. <sorry. laughs> it makes me want to hurl. I'm sorry. It's just bad, you guys. This is bad. So this don't, is bad theology. Don't put the emphasis on you knit me together in my mother's womb, protecting a baby and a preborn baby. Don't put the emphasis there because there's thousands of verses about Jesus's love and forgiveness and compassion. So as followers of Jesus, how did she end it? As followers of Jesus. That's where I'm going to put the emphasis. Shouldn't we be putting the emphasis there? Mm -hmm. There's only one verse. Oh, or I'm not going to even mention the other ones. <laughs> the one verse, thou shalt not kill which isn't even the one she mentioned only one verse about getting knit together in my mother's womb Beep. love forgiveness compassion so let's all have this big huddle around the campfire and say about how grateful we are not all of them well all of them how grateful we are that we could have an abortion because if we weren't able to have this abortion as emmanuel Acho said wouldn't that have been like life ruining life ending wouldn't that have been a, a life ending a form of life ending for you if you hadn't been able to run your race mm -hmm. and had that an abortion and now you you have this special life um and voice that maybe you wouldn't have had if you had had that child isn't that a form of life ending for you mm -hmm. fellow christian man dude and like you said that she was in a sense kind of wrestling with it a little bit but it never there was no, 
there was no true representation for life. No. That lady not. could have been that. And if Chelsea had used that as an opportunity to really mm -hmm. go there and steer the conversation, that could have actually been good dialogue. If Emmanuel Acho would have used that opportunity, instead it was a bunch of hogwash bullshit. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh. Yeah. All right. Well, guys, <laughs> that was a lot. Grieve, dude. I'm grieving. Let me just say this about uh, Chelsea, Chelsea Smith. You guys can think what you will about this. Pastor Chelsea Smith, or pastor's wife Chelsea Smith, but she calls uh, herself a pastor. Emmanuel Acho said, we look at your all's church is championing some churches, it's all men, but you guys champion kind of the, the women's roles in, I don't know, leadership or just... It, I, I have no idea. Uh, yeah, it's just you a guys weird comment. <laughs> champion women. You know, when I hear Chelsea and the opportunity she had, Pastor Chelsea or Pastor's wife Chelsea, she should be a Christian. She should be someone that they can look to for guidance. Mm -hmm. Her husband's been the pastor of a giant church for years and years and years, Bible study, so forth. It reminds me of a Christian parent who sees their kid living in sin and just says, and this is plenty of Christian parents, by the way, sees their, their child living in sin and just says, they'll figure it out. I'm just here to love them. No judgment for me. What is a Christian parent supposed to do? Train up their child in the way they should go. And when they are old, they shall not depart from it. She's not going to correct them. She's just going to encourage and love them. Keep going, kiddo. I'm for you. And it is actually kind of interesting. Um, <laughs> Justin Bieber, we, we, we know that Justin and Chelsea and her husband, Judah, like they're close. Um, they've been close for a while now. You look at Justin Bieber and Haley. You see them posting. We shared about it in our last video. Haley shared in a couple posts about this just being so sad at the overturning Roe v. Wade. She signed the petition, mm -hmm. the public petition or whatever. And then you see Justin on his Instagram posting saying this is... Uh, I believe all women should... He said, for what it's worth, I think women should have the choice to do with uh, the choice what to do with their own bodies. Why would we be surprised that Justin and Haley are making these posts when they're Christian authority figures come on this show and do that? Yeah. We shouldn't be surprised. Christian leaders, Christian pastors and pastors' wives, who also is a pastor, have a responsibility to shepherd the flock. When they come on here and do that, what do we expect out of their flock? Yeah, for me, I feel like watching this video, if I were a young believer and I had just found out that I was pregnant and was not sure if I should keep it oh. or not, like, Lose I would the baby. watch this and I would feel so confident in aborting my child. And that is disgusting to me. Because that you every can single be... one of these women uh, is calling themselves believers, that Emmanuel is calling himself a believer, and not once do they encourage the idea that, hey, keeping your child saving this life is actually a beautiful thing. And there are many, many women out there who decided, I'm not going to have an abortion. I'm going to push through. I'm going to save this child's life. I'm going to raise this child. I'm going to put this child up for adoption. I'm going to give this child to my family, whatever. And it turned out beautifully. There was not a single yeah. talk oh, about sh that. Shame on this video. Shame on this video. And people who are advocating for this video. It's so sad. It's really, really sad. Exactly. And then I am so compelled. Like, exactly what you said. There are baby Christians come on here. See, oh my goodness, that's my pastor's wife. Or that's my pastor, my women's pastor, or whatever that I love. She's on this panel. And then they leave just feeling that much more angry that Roe v. Wade got overturned and that much more compelled that I can go and be blessed by God and mm -hmm. be a Christian and be a good person and go to church and have my abortion. Mm -hmm. That is so sad. And it makes me also <sighs> think we had someone that lives in Lexington. We ran into her and she asked Morgan, she said, Morgan, can I have 
get sit down and have coffee with you because I want to call you guys out on something. And ultimately, she said, before I moved to Lexington, I attended the church where Haley Bieber goes in L.A. And just so you guys know a little backstory. Um, in Seattle. That's where she went. Oh, she went to Seattle. Oh, so did she go to mm-hmm. Pastor Judah Smith's church? Mm-hmm. Church home? Oh, mm-hmm. I didn't even realize. I was thinking she went to like mm-hmm. one of the L.A. churches. Okay, so she and she was like, Morgan, I just want to challenge you and Paul who make these videos. I saw your video where you called out Haley Bieber. Mm-hmm. And we did. We made a video responding to a Haley Bieber interview where it was just, it was, it was rough. Yes. It was rough. Another kind of similar video to this. But she said, I saw that video and I just don't like it. At our church, we don't. We just love, we do not, we, it's, we don't call out. Yeah, there's maybe stuff going on, but we don't call that stuff out because it's just judgmental and we just are called to love. So that's what's going on. That's the culture that she said. And then you see all this happening and you're like, yeah, this is no surprise. Haley Bieber's not being, I mean, according to this girl and what we're seeing here, there's her pastor, mm-hmm. one of her pastors. Yep. There you go. Let's just, let's. This was a rough video to make, honestly. Yeah, I think it's needed to make these videos. It's just so sad yeah. at the state of the American church. And I shared something on my Facebook that my mom, or on Instagram, my mom sent me of the statistics of Christian pastors in America who mm-hmm. actually identify as having a biblical worldview. And it's like 35%. That's disturbing. And when I hear that, I'm like, no, no, that can't be true. And then when you look at the different denominations and all these, and it's like, Whoa, these pat there's so many progressive, wokey, or just kind of, yeah, we believe bits here and there. It's like 35%. Come on, church. Come on, people of God. Step it up. Please read God's word. Pre- please let that shape your life. Because mm-hmm. if you're not going to let it shape your life, you're going to get swept away and you're going to make your own religion. Yep. This is why we, (laughs) one of the reasons we changed our little saying of why we make videos, but to encourage you guys, like now more than ever, you have to be in the word of God. You got to be in the word. You got to be plugged into people who are going to encourage you and edify through God's word, not through worldly advice, not through this watered down grace filled zero balance nonsense (laughs) um like get in the word and know your god know what he says know what he stands on amen but we but where will christians be called out if not in the church literally where guys comment below let us know your thoughts on all of this uh, on the, the Chelsea Pastor Chelsea Smith, on this interview on Emmanuel Acho and these Christians and the abortion debate and overturning Roe v. Wade. Let's keep the dialogue going. We love you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. We'll catch you again very soon. Have hope. And be free. If you're in the live, we'll be right back. Hey guys, as you may have noticed, we get very few brand deals, which is why our patrons, the names you see here, are so important. You guys really are the lifeblood of this ministry. We could not do this without you all. If you believe in this content and you want to partner with us on Patreon, click the link below or just go to patreon.com slash Paul and Morgan Show.